my son is getting to the age where he's starting to crawl and climb. So it's time to build him something he can practice these skills on. I mentioned that I was building a pickler to family and friends, and they expressed interest in having one as well. So here I go, building three picklers. Two need to be completely assembled, and one is to be shipped as a flat pack. If you don't know what a pickler is, it's basically a climbing triangle for kids. It was developed by a Hungarian pediatrician, Dr. Emmy Pickler, over 100 years ago. The files that I made and am using for this project will be available if you want to make one yourself. I used Fusion 360 to design all the parts and my Shapeoko CNC to cut them all out. Now I know this is extreme overkill when it comes to the tools you need to build this project. A drill and some sort of saw is all you really need to do this. So why use the CNC? Because I enjoy the ability to design something once and make all my measurements once and be able to repeat that process easily. So I started this project with a rough sketch on paper to figure out the rough dimensions. I wanted the picklers to be able to fold up as compact as possible for easy storage. I quickly realized I needed to make a couple prototypes to get the size and to refine the overall design. For the first prototype, I went with a leg length of 28 inches. This put the overall height when extended out into the triangle at like 24 inches. So the first thing I learned is that this was way too small. For the second prototype, I added six inches to the overall leg height, making the length of the legs 34 inches. The only issue with that was my CNC bed is only 33 by 33 inches. With prototype number two now complete, I did learn that I needed to tweak the hole spacing to get the rungs to line up on each side. I also learned I needed to make the inset portion on the leg a little larger so that the joint can move a little more freely. One thing I still needed to test was the hole size for the poplar dowel I'd be using. I got these one inch dowels from the home improvement store and I was expecting there to be a little variance in each pole. So I did a hole diameter test. After testing these dowels, I decided to go with the hole size of 1.05. I didn't wanna make the hole super tight either because I wanted room for wood glue. My plan was to make one pickler out of walnut, one pickler out of maple, and the last one out of pine. Yeah, I know. Whoever gets the pine one is my least favorite. I'm just kidding. I actually didn't end up using the pine or maple because I made too many mistakes. You'll see what I mean here in a second. So I'm starting with rough sawn lumber here and I had to mill it all down to the right size. But pre-milled wood from the home improvement store or even plywood works just as well here. I loaded up the walnut to be the first one cut on the CNC. I needed a total of four legs and two triangle braces for each pickler. So I decided I'd cut two legs at a time on the CNC and do the triangle separately. I started out using an eighth inch down cut bit for everything. This would enable me to do everything without a tool change and give me a clean top surface. I quickly realized that the depth of the pockets for the rungs were too much for this bit. I was getting a lot of tool deflection when clearing these pockets. So I switched to a quarter inch upcut bit for these pockets. This left a slightly less desirable result at the top edge, but was easily sanded off afterwards. After cutting all the legs out for the first pickler, I was really happy with how they looked. That was until I realized that the two legs with the inset on them can't be the same. That's because the holes need to be on the inside of the leg for the pegs and the inset portion needs to be at the top. So they actually have to mirror each other so the holes are on the correct sides. This isn't the first time that the orientation of pieces has bitten me in the butt. If I would have taken the time to make a true 3D model of the pickler infusion, I would have realized this. But not all is lost. I just needed to make one more of the long legs with the correct orientation. I wanted to speed up the process for the second pickler, so I decided to cut all the leg pieces all out at once instead of cutting them two at a time. All right, so I've been having some issues with the CNC. The problem I'm having is I need a larger CNC, but in order to make this work, I'm cutting 36 inch pieces on a 33 by 33 inch CNC bed. How am I doing that? Um, I'm doing that by running them at a 45 degree angle. You can actually cut longer parts if you run them at a 45 degree angle. So I've been trying to do that. The problem I've been running into is lining them up on the CNC bed. So one, that the, the shape that I'm cutting fits the stock that I have. I'm running out of room. As you can see here, um, the CNC reaches the end of its 33 inches and just it can't go any further so it just limits out. All right so I'm gonna try on the CNC again. I think my solution on the CNC is I can't run all four parts at the same time. I, there's just not enough room for error there. Um, so I'm gonna run two parts at a time and that's the next thing I'm gonna try. 
But rather than wasting this walnut, because the hole alignment is perfect, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some double-sided tape and take a leg that I've already have cut out and I'm gonna stick it to the stock um, and trace it out. I don't wanna waste this walnut and there's a way around it with a flush trim bit. So let me show you how I did that. First, I attached the wood and the template together using double-sided tape. Then I used my bandsaw to cut out the rough shape using the template as a guide. Then I went over to the router table and using a flush trim bit, I trimmed everything to the final shape. Then I could separate the two pieces and put the round over on all the edges. It's as simple as that. Man, do I love a good flush trim bit. I have a link in the description to my favorite flush trim bit. Using code ANDYBIRD at checkout will get you 5% off. If you do, you're also supporting me and what I do, and so I am thankful for that. At this point, I had all my legs I needed, and I was able to salvage most of the walnut I had messed up. But I still needed the triangle support pieces. To do this, I used the plywood triangle from the last prototype as a template. This process was the same process I did to save the legs. Template, double-sided tape, bandsaw, flush trim, round over. All right, so I needed some knobs for this project, and originally I was just going to buy them. But that would have looked terrible. Beautiful walnut legs with plastic knobs. No thank you. So I decided to make my own. I whipped up a quick file and cut them out of some walnut. I cut the head off some quarter inch hex bolts and used some five minute epoxy to hold them in place. I mounted threaded inserts into the short legs that would receive the bolt and hold everything together. Unfortunately, this didn't work out exactly as I planned because the force that was exerted on the knobs when tightening was too much. So for my second attempt, I drilled all the way through the knob and put a bolt through and countersunk a nut onto the backside. This has proved to work much, much better. The placement of the pivot point hole was a little tricky. This is where the bolt from the knob would go through and enable the pickler to fold up. But to my surprise, this part actually went fairly smoothly. Once I figured out the measurements for the first one, it was a matter of just repeating it on the next five. I also took these measurements back into Fusion and added them to the model. So next time the CNC will pre-drill these holes for me and I won't have to measure. All the files that I'm offering for this project have been revised a bunch of times to work out all the kinks. So the issues that I've run into, you won't. Next, I added a round over to all the edges, filled all the knots, and sanded to 120 grit. I first assembled the support triangle to the long legs using glue and screws. Then I added the dowel rungs using wood glue. I had to use some clamps here to help hold everything together while the glue dried. In reality, the whole sizing could have been a tiny bit smaller, maybe 1.04 but in the end it all worked out. After assembling the two picklers, I was worried how my friends who are getting the flat pack version of this pickler would assemble it. They don't have the clamps like I did to help hold everything together while the glue is drying. So I came up with the solution of buying larger dowels, dowels that were an inch and an eighth instead of just an inch. These were way too big for the 1.05 diameter holes I had created, but I could sand the dowels down to get a tighter fit. So at the time of making this video, the flat pack is in the mail and on the way to my friend's house. So the results are yet to be seen, but I am going to be getting feedback from them that is extremely valuable. This is a little bit of a trial for me as well, because one day I'd like to sell and ship some flat pack designs. So every opportunity is a learning opportunity. Anytime you're designing and building something from scratch, you're going to run into things that you thought would work and learn that they don't. But that's okay. It's all a learning process, and the goal is to get better every time. One thing that I want to get better at is 3D modeling and have more confidence in that. Overall, I'm really happy with how these turned out. Needless to say, this is a piece that's going to be around a while for our kids to learn and grow with. You can find all the tools and files that I used for this build in the description below if it's a project that you want to tackle yourself. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to do that as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.